Content warning, today's episode of Pop Culture covers topics that may be disturbing for some viewers or listeners. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. Hello, my lovely hummingbirds. How's it going, everyone? Welcome or welcome back to another episode of Makeup and Motivation here on pop culture with uh, your lovely host, Element Rovaskis. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how or why or when they started saying the whole thing. <laughs> but here we are. How's it going, everyone? I hope you have had a great start to your week this far. Enjoying the ever-changing, but still much more on the warmer side weather as far as like here in Chicago. We're going to get into other things going on around the world, including updates on student protests, uh, commencement speeches, (laughs) and so much more going on, as well as today's topic of conversation, which is AI, the way of the future. But I would greatly appreciate it if you would all join me in a moment of silence for everyone that we have lost in the world of music, media, news, entertainment, movies, sports, the arts, and so much more across popular culture, including Steve Albini, Bernard Hill, Darius Morris, Roberta Marrero, Barbara Fuller, Sade Robinson, Roberto Cavalli, Antero Greco, Vero, Nika Tusan, and all the lives that have been lost around the world due to the ongoing conflicts. Please join me now for a moment of silence. Thank you all for joining me in this moment of silence. For today's makeup look, we're gonna do a like futuristic e inspired <laughs> AI robotic <laughs> uncanny valley makeup look that I have previously done on Instagram. Don't know if I took that picture down or not, but you're gonna see it again. <laughs> Anyways, let us get into the makeup look.
hi my lovely hummingbirds so what do we think about the makeup look y'all is it giving technology is it giving full metal barbie doll is it giving futura hermosa <laughs> Is it giving? This is definitely not the 21st century Xenon had predicted for us. <laughs> I think so. So, on today's episode, like I mentioned, we're going to be covering everything that's been going on. First and foremost, congratulations to all of those graduating as far as the class of 2024. Whether it is high school or college, a big, big shout out to each and every one of you. Um... As we have seen, student protests have taken over the campuses here stateside, and while there has been a lot of discourse around, like, the effect and validity, validity of it, jeez, <laughs> validity of it, where we have uh, both sides to it as well, where there are people saying, like, there are loitering, and then there's others saying, no, them standing up in asking the schools that they actively participate in and put money into divesting is a very good resolution uh, and a good push for the schools to divest. Unfortunately, there have been schools, I think it was UCLA, I don't remember. I know Harvard definitely rescinded uh, their motion to divest or hadn't actually put a step forward and then 15 of the students that were protesting that were pro-Palestinian were rejected from walking the stage, were rejected from getting their diploma. One of them even did a uh, an op-ed of why they're protesting to begin with, students at least, and here is a picture of it. Uh, there is a link in the description. It is an Instagram post from the Harvard pro-Palestinian, it's a student society, it's a student organization, and not only that, but from that to Biden going to Morehouse, he got an honorary doctorate, <laughs> and I don't know how I feel about it, but a lot of the discourse around it was that, like, his words were very, um, campaign -y for lack of a better word, and they were like, you know, Joe, I think you forgot, you're not at a campaign, you're supposed to be giving the speech to inspire these students. Now, there were students that did have their backs turned to President Biden, there, and it was few, it wasn't, like, when I saw the articles originally, I thought it was gonna be, like, a buttload of just students, like, completely, the assembly turning their backs, but that was not the case. I did like some of the points that he touched upon, like allotting the family and loved ones of the students and the sacrifices that are made. He did talk a bit about the history of Morehouse, and that was cool. Uh, they did have a flag of DR Congo in the background, and people were like, the flag is backwards. <laughs> um, so it's... <sighs> Watching over the speech, it felt not like a last hurrah, but a little bit, like him trying to set his point across of like i hear you guys about the protests we hear you about palestine he did briefly mention how like he is working and has been actively working since october to find a, a two-state solution because that is the only solution uh and he said that oh my god why am i like blanking out <laughs> he also it, it just it was very it was an interesting watch if you guys get a chance to, the speech is up on YouTube. It's roughly four minutes or so. It's not that long. The other commencement speech that was causing a lot of discourse, a lot of chaos, was Harrison Bucker. Rucker? No, it's Bucker. <laughs> I'm a child. Uh, so... <sighs> Here's the thing. <laughs> and don't come in my comment section being like, Monroe, you cannot possibly, you, bitch, cannot possibly agree with him. No! Um, so, for those of you that don't know, Harrison Butker is a player for the Kansas City Chiefs. 
Hopkins. The Chiefs are located in Missouri. Benedictine College is a Catholic college in Missouri. Uh, and so he went over there and gave a speech. Pretty sure they're in Missouri. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and he spoke, he touched upon various subjects. Okay, so he, he talked about like marriage. He talked about LGBTQIA+. Plus. He talked about, you know, disappointment in the clergy uh, attending Latin Mass or the traditional Latin Mass. Um, and he got really into like, I will say this, if we were to like remove <laughs> certain bits of it, uh, it can be a very inspiring speech for the students because he does mention like the difficulties that they had to face during COVID and now like all the protests and everything that's going on in the state of the world. Like it is a toll on the students, on their minds, on their families and just all of it, right? <laughs> the reason why I wasn't so <gasps> clutching my pearls about it And this is not an overgeneralization of the state of Missouri by any means. There are very lovely people in the state of Missouri. And there are very lovely people in the state of Kansas. I have visited both. Been there extended periods of time. Everyone's, for the most part, quite accommodating. accommodating. However, racism is still quite prevalent. Especially if you speak Spanish. Especially if... You are not white or white passing sufficiently. Like, there, there are still pockets of racism in both those places. And it's quite in your face at times. First off. Secondly, both those spaces of the country are also quite conservative especially in like a setting such as benedictine college which crazy because even like the nuns of the college were like we do not stand by what he said <laughs> respect ladies i appreciate that uh the nfl was like we do not agree with your statement sir because what the hell he vilified dei which like you're you're vilifying diversity equity and inclusion and I think it was on the rundown where they mentioned she was like the one thing that one of your your quarterback has been advocating for for years like come on now my guy read the room <laughs> um he mentions Taylor not by name but says my uh teammate's girlfriend <laughs> and honestly I'm not surprised by everything he said, the way that Catholicism is taught some of the core beliefs, especially in very, uh, not refined, that's not the word, uh, the, the conservative spaces, Catholicism is riddled with levels of bigotry, with levels of misogyny, with unfortunately hate towards the individuals in the lgbtqia plus community uh it is riddled with this idea of like there should be no issues like uh, putting down the issues of those that benefit from diversity and inclusion because it's the mindset of i see no color type of thing I was not shocked by what he said. Honestly, I wasn't. I was listening to it and I was like, yep, sounds like what I would imagine a good Catholic boy turned quarterback, turned husband, not quarterback, uh, defenseman? I think he's a defense Ooh, football player <laughs> turned husband, you know, with kids, all that, that is white, that lives in Missouri or Kansas or wherever he's living at. I'm not shocked. I'm not shocked by the mentality. I'm not shocked by his words. None of it. 
And when he mentioned being disappointed in the clergy, I'm not shocked by that either. I have seen discourse even amongst like the clergy themselves. I I don't know. I just I spent a lot of time on the internet, y'all. <laughs> Just looking at things, especially when Pope recently, I think it was, ooh, when did Pope Francisco say this? It was maybe a couple months ago, and he was like, he would bless LGBTQIA plus couples. Of course, the Catholic Church has always been riddled with chaos, with scandal, with so many issues including pedophilia and one of the loud comments when he said he was going to bless people of the lgbtqia plus community was okay but first he should focus on fixing the church first he should focus on like fixing the issues with victims of pedophilia he should deal with like all the all the other scandals and issues that the church has been involved in and it was very loud amongst not just other members of the clergy but also of practicing catholics um that he was in the wrong for supporting a sin harrison Booker speech when it comes to is it Booker or Bucker? Either way, Harrison. When it comes to everything he mentioned, again, it's not shocking. I like I grew up Catholic, my lovely hummingbirds. I was real involved in the church growing up. Okay, like I I still consider myself a Catholic woman. Like I still have faith. Yes, even with all my little brujita and woo woo and all that stuff. Like. I still believe in God. I, all of it. Ooh, I got sentimental when I said that. <laughs> like, I really do. Like, I, you know, that's, that's my shit. Is like, I love La Virgen de Guadalupe. Like, <laughs> there, there's, yes, I still believe, still have faith. You know, God Almighty, Jesus Christ, holy angels, the disciples, like, all of it. Which is also why I'm not surprised that he has a very traditional mindset when it comes to the roles of a husband and wife in the home. I cannot tell you that I did not grow up with the same mindset. Like, I've, if you went to watch my endo story where I discuss a little bit about it, I say, like, growing up, like, I wanted to be my mom. And I got so offended at school when they were like, that's not a real job. And I was like, but she's a stay at home mom. Like, I want to do that. You know, like that, that was, (laughs) that was definitely a dream. (laughs) Granted, I have said, even on TikTok, I'm like, you know, I, I would love to be a, um, not a stay at home mom. What is the word? A kept woman. (laughs) I want to be a kept woman. I don't want to have to like worry about anything in the world besides my health and like my personal things that I do throughout the day. <laughs> I've said that because it is a mindset like me, like growing up Catholic, not just Catholic, but like Latina Catholic. Like it is something that is real ingrained in you. And it's not that like you grow up and you get rid of it. I, like I said, I still, I want to be a Catholic woman <laughs> where my husband at. <laughs> but. I have not always been <laughs> uh, any less opinionated. Got in quite the trouble sometimes <laughs> because of my opinions. Um, but his statements did not shock me. His push to like tell people, you know, go to the traditional Latin Mass. If you've never experienced a traditional Latin Mass as a Catholic, I think you should at least once. It is very beautiful. It feels very like a pullback in time. Like, it really does. Uh, (laughs) But just because his statements did not shock me does not mean that I am in complete accordance with them. 
However, when it comes to, sadly, when it, like, I, I don't know how to say this <laughs> besides saying it for what it is while in 2024, his ideas might seem quite backwards for the religious setting he was in, actively using his freedom of speech, it's, it's not shocking. It's not shocking that those are his values, those are his morals, that is his belief system, even if we do not agree with it by any means. I mean... I cannot say that I am shocked. While, and, and I think that's one of the things that, like, we really have to take into account because if you pull him out of that specific setting, he's a football player in the NFL on a daily basis, you know, dealing with teammates of various backgrounds and religious and ethnicities and skin color and race and all of it and granted I don't I don't know I, I'm not a fly on the wall on the Kansas City Chiefs <laughs> locker room so I don't know what those discussions look like but I think his the reason for such outrage besides just a blatant disregard for the LGBTQIA plus community and him saying they get a month of sin. Like, sir, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Respectfully. <laughs> uh, and, you know, vilifying DEI. He also vilified surrogacy and IVF and all of that and called it a natural. And I was like, my dude, I hope y'all never have to experience the difficulties of infertility and childbirth. Because not everyone just does it for the ha-has and fucks of it of doing it. Like, people struggle heavily with fertility issues. I got no uterus. <laughs> I have endo. There are a slew of other health conditions and issues that afflict women, affect women, that can cause these issues and i'm just like sitting there and i'm like ain't no way his mama and his wife are in support of this but then i pulled back for a second and i was like honestly i wouldn't be surprised if they were another thing the fact that he addresses the women specifically and so many people the discourse online was like dude your mom is literally like so so successful and she like i think she's a scientist can't remember <laughs> but i was like reading the comments and i'm like yeah but I feel like that might have also shaped his response in that moment. And I feel like that might have also shaped his idea around it. Because, like, say, for example, my lovely hummingbirds, if you grow up in a toxic household where mom and dad are always fighting and you grow up and you're like I never want to have a relationship like that. I want to have a peaceful and loving and not experience any of that. If his mom, and I don't know, right, because I, I don't know how he grew up, but my mind went to, like, if his mom was always at work, and she was never home, and he felt this sense of, like, abandonment, especially if he's growing up very religious, of, like, oh, you know, the, the mother is supposed to be at home and all this stuff, then he's like, well, why isn't my mom? Was my take on it? Maybe I'm reading too much into it. <laughs> yes, it is a Michelob Ultra glass with cold brew in it <laughs> mm. his glass is older than me my lovely hummingbirds that shit's been i think they've had it for like 40 years now <laughs> but i wasn't shocked i was not surprised by the things he said as a fellow catholic i can also tell him that yes i too am very disappointed with the clergy and the lack of direction that they have for the general, you know, populace of, like, the church and managing in an ever-changing society. Like, I'm sure it's fucking hard. Um, but I think we deviate <laughs> on the reason for our disagreeances. I remember going to church with family. We were in Missouri, actually. Can't remember the name of the church. 
but the priest there did an excellent job. It was a Spanish mass, and he took time to say the mass in both Spanish and English when it came to uh, the litany, not the litany. Wow, why am I blanking out right now? <laughs> the sermon, jeez. When he was giving the sermon, he, you know, broke it down to, like, he was saying it first for, like, the adults and the parents and everything, and then when he said it in English, he broke it down for, like, the younger parishioners. And I was like, oh my god, I love that, because he is literally catering to his flock. He is catering to the people that attend his church, right? And I was like, you know, if more individuals were like this, if more people, you know, pulled away a little bit, <laughs> just zo zoomed a little bit out, right, it would be, I don't know, we'd, we'd probably have a much, di much more different conversation around what is going on in Catholicism and the church and the leaving and not leaving of parishioners i will say this though majority of parishioners that leave my lovely hummingbirds leave the church and you can sound off in the comments if you like are no longer in attendance whether it is catholic or christian or whatever form of organized religion <sighs> anyone can tell you it is rare when you directly leave from a lack of faith it is few and far in between. Nine times out of ten, if not more, it is because of the other individuals in the church. And I know, you know, like, we shouldn't base it on other people. But if it is a place that is supposed to be your refuge in God and all you face is being berated and hated talk shit on fakeness snakes <laughs> demonizing ass prayer circles uh invalidation for very well researched things <laughs> and other factors like it um it makes it hard for people to say unfortunately and Another thing is, like, one of the issues also occurring currently in Catholicism, and this is not just going to be an entirely me talking about church episode, <laughs> but why did I just hear, take me to church? <laughs> oh my god, no. Okay, so just quick little, I will never forget, when in the Catholic newspaper, yes, the Archdiocese of Chicago has a Catholic newspaper. <laughs> And they posted something about, like, back when Harry Potter was a thing. Of how it was horrendous for children. And I read it, and I was cackling my ass off. I was like, yes, but is it really Harry Potter that is causing all this chaos or unsupervised internet? <laughs> and I was like, I'm gonna shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm gonna not give you in trouble. Um, <laughs> but I don't know, I just thought it was so funny. I was just like... No. <laughs> that is not what is deviating your flock to turn to, like, poison and things like that. Which makes it very, like, scary when you think about it. Because, like, of book burnings and book bannings and things like that that have happened over the years. And how much of it has been, if not politically influenced, definitely religiously influenced. And either way, I'm just like, no. <laughs> I do not like that. Um... But one of the leading factors of, like, why people do end up leaving organized religion is because a lack of understanding fully of their religion. A lot of people don't actually read the Bible actively. A lot of people don't actually know the history of the church and how it began. A lot of people are not really aware of the ins and outs of the faith that they are practicing now however now i can't say that of the religion they're practicing because faith and religion are not equal 
Faith is the relationship we have with God, and religion is the relationship we have with church and our fellow man. Anyway, <laughs> catechism <laughs> done. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm not surprised by lovely humming words. I'm not surprised by what he said. Okay. Um, I wasn't shocked. I think he also got an honorary degree. I'm not too sure. Uh, I know, like I said, Joe Biden did. He One of the things that he mentioned during his speech which I found quite interesting. He he was basically, like, boosting up, saying, like, oh, a Morehouse man would be next of, like, being part of the cabinet of, like, the White House. And I can't remember where the article was, but if I find it again, I'll, like, put it in the description. If it's not in there, I didn't find it. But someone was like, statistically, that is, that is a very erroneous comment to make because... <laughs> You know? Uh, and if you don't know, yeah. It's uh, the likelihood of it, sadly, is not at an all time high. As I mentioned with Harrison's speech, like, racism is still quite prevalent. Um, a lack of employment and a lack of higher levels of education, even for POC individuals is quite low. And the opportunities that come afterwards are also quite low. The difficulties faced in the workforce are quite high. But one of the things that he mentioned, he was like in 25 to 50 years, like, you know, look back and think of what you did for not just like your family and loved ones, but what you did for your country. And I was like, yeah, I see why everyone's saying it's quite campaigny. <laughs> I really do. But I was like, okay. And I like sat there and I was like, hmm, what have I done for my country? <laughs> And I was like, ooh, I am American, aren't I? That's crazy. <laughs> oh my god, no. So, little tangent. I was laughing my ass off. I saw this creator on TikTok. And she's Mexican and French or British. What? Or I, it's probably two different creators. But I looked at it and I was like, there were other choices. <laughs> Y'all didn't have to come live the American dream. I could have been British. <laughs> could have been living my best Bridgerton life. Hello? <laughs> I was so offended. I looked at my mom. I was like, y'all, could, y'all, we, we could have not been here. <laughs> messy. Just messy. <laughs> but, I don't know. I think we haven't seen the last of this. And like I mentioned, um, it was the, the Chicago 7, the movie about the protests. Also, student-led protests. It's giving very that air to get on it from like a little witchy aspect. We are in the karmic year. We are in the eighth year. I know you've probably heard that scrolling through TikTok. If we have the same FYP. <laughs> if we are in the same algorithm, you've heard it. And it is very... While so much is happening, like the ICC launching arrest warrants for for Benjamin Netanyahu and Yoav Gallant and three Hamas leaders, I, I don't I don't think we've seen the end of this anytime soon, and it breaks my heart to say that. While there are small victories amongst all of it, like Motas you know, being, I think he was recently in London, and being able to travel and see the world. I, I look at him, and just my heart goes out to that man. For Bassan, who is still in Palestine currently, and she, I think she was in a different part of Rafa, and, you know, I check 
IG every day to make sure she's still alive. She recently won a Peabody for her work with Al Jazeera. And, you know, looking at everything that Plesia posts. Like, there's, there's so... There's so much. So... So much going on. So many factors. And... I think collectively as a society, we are experiencing a very, very big shift, which is why things feel so turbulent, which is why things are so turbulent. <sighs> the reason that those commencement speeches are, they can cause a shock factor and can be disarming or aggravating is because of the state of the country. Joe Biden speaking about the difficulties of black individuals and how Morehouse was founded and how he has, I think he mentioned he has the biggest employment of black people working with him at the White House. I don't know <laughs> how true that is. Um, but I think in the discourse that I saw around that was people were saying online we keep allowing them as in government and elites and people in power to play in our faces every time elections come around it's the same thing the same promises the same stories and someone said like you know he could have been worked on this it did like people are tired people are tired of the cycles i mean i'm not gonna i <laughs> i will never forget kamala going to puerto rico <laughs> And then freaking roasting her in a song, and she's just out here jamming. And her translator was like, you, mm, 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 "Don't, don't clap at that. Don't clap at that. <laughs> They're calling you a colonizer, man. You know things like that. It's like we're at that breaking point. We're at that breaking point in society where everyone is fed up. We're seeing it with everything that's getting exposed with celebs, like everything coming out about P Diddy." Even, even everything that was said in the Kendrick and Drake beef, like, <laughs> things like that, it's like, we're seeing just, and I, I mentioned it last year on pop culture, how we're entering, ooh, was it on here or was it in my group chat? <laughs> it's probably in a group chat, but I was mentioning how we are in a different planetary phase and how essentially what once was ruling which was luxury and opulence and the belief that we can get it too we are now peeling back the covers on all of that and realizing how big that gap actually is especially with one the elimination of the middle class honestly like i i don't okay right <laughs> first secondly just seeing again all the atrocities all the tragedy everything that's happening around the world and seeing the little collection of people that hold pretty much the entirety of the world's wealth in their pockets when people can't afford rent can't afford food can't and like that's why when kim k was like you need to get your ass up and work I, that, that's not actually how she said it but like talking about like people complaining and i was like honey <laughs> honey not daughter of beverly hills socialite and deceased lawyer dad lawyer of the stars <laughs> telling people to just get up and work man also we're gonna touch on like the the notion of like the downfall of the kardashian allegedly <laughs> allegedly the downfall of the kardashians that is occurring in a separate episode um because there is just so much to unpack there and diving a little bit more deep into opulence and how it was so ruling in society for so long and how now people are like bro fuck the opulence like i'm trying to survive and get all my medical shit in order <laughs> personally <laughs> so a few things that have been going on stateside besides 
so as far as Palestine goes, um, I mentioned the arrest warrant launched by the ICC. The UN did make a motion to make Palestine a full member, but considering the U.S. has vetoed, now people are saying, how do we veto the U.S.'s veto? <laughs> uh, I was just like, what? And then I saw in the news today, they're sending, I don't know how many million, like hundreds of millions more to Ukraine, and I was like, where do we keep getting this money? <laughs> Like, I'm not trying to be funny. I don't know where the hell I saw this, like, money calculator thing where it tells you, like, the debts of, like, the powers of the world. You can't, like, you cannot. <laughs> Every meme that's, like, baby girl talking to the U.S., get your credit score in order first before you come check mine. Like, I looked at that number and it just kept going up. And I was sitting there and I'm like, <clears throat> no. <laughs> Oh my god, what is happening, right? Uh, like, US, do we need to, like, have a family intervention? Like, what's going on? But, you got some spending habits, sweetie. No, but, not really a joke, but kind of a joke aside. <sighs> okay, one last final joke. A comment that I noticed. Uh, in one of the videos pertaining to the U.S. and all the power plays that it has played throughout history and what it's doing right now when it comes to... Ooh! Also, sidebar. I saw a post recently about uh, Israel celebrating Independence Day on May 14th. And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> I was like, where what what are you talking about yeah so the day of the nakba they celebrated in israel years of independence and i was very thoroughly confused because i'm like but you got placed there by the british in the u.s to essentially take over he lived in the territory. I'm confused. <laughs> Granted, I do live in the U.S. and it is a colonial country. I mean, they showed up. There was war. Then there was war against the British to claim their independence or whatever. And I just... it The history of the world is not pretty. By any means. I was digging into everything going on in Venezuela. Like, I don't know if you guys have seen the videos of, at least here in Chicago, the fights have been, that have been happening, uh, them chasing cops away the from a shelter over on Jackson. Like, it, it just... I'm looking at it and I'm like, literally the world is on fire. And we're all kind of sitting here like, what? Like what is going on <laughs> and at times when I was like we need to press a reset button this is not what I meant <laughs> this is not what I meant God um, but it, that is also why today's episode is titled what what it's titled because like like what in the chaotic AI prompt is going on yeah because everything is just like up in flames <laughs> I wish I could give y'all some cuter, like, y'all remember happier times when we started pop culture and I was just giving y'all tea. <laughs> <laughs> and me talking about nonsense, yeah. It, <laughs> I do. But, as far as technology is concerned, so, oh, wait, no, pause, I, stateside, what's going on before we get into the tech? The reason in, <laughs> sorry, the reason why in exa exhausted exasperation, right? I mentioned last week's video of makeup and motivation. I mentioned how we really like, even though it is hiring, even though there is so much chaos going on and all this insanity, the reason why we need to really keep our eyes and ears open, my lovely hummingbirds, is because there is 
so much going on at once. So many laws are changing here stateside as well. I think Oregon was going to pass a law like removing the ability of homeless individuals from like, like they're going to criminalize them sleeping on park benches. Um, and then there is another law or no, it's a proposed bill. It's called HR 431. And the proposed bill reads the following. The right to life guaranteed by the Constitution is rested in each human being at all stages of life, including the moment of fertilization and cloning or any other moment at which an individual came into being. Nothing in this bill shall be construed to authorize the prosecution of any woman for the death of her unborn child. So when that bill got proposed, first off, I was like, who are we cloning? <laughs> My first question. Secondly, when I was looking at it, I was like, okay, so you're proposing a bill so that women do not get jailed for abortion. And I was like, that's not sitting right with me. Recently, the other day, Missouri is motioning or already or no they proposed a law to be passed where charges can be held against women who have abortions okay that is including like if they cross state lines to have an abortion elsewhere and then return home um there is no abortion so they're basically removing the viability for abortion if incest or abuse or rape occurs and also prevention of divorce during pregnancy, even in situations of violence. We've seen the removal of diversity, equity, and inclusion from a lot of places in Florida. Uh, the law that is being passed, I think it was already passed in Georgia, where like if you look like an immigrant, you're getting arrested, which like... <laughs> please what does an immigrant look like right like there <laughs> there there's so many little that are getting sprinkled in between everything because there's so much else going on a larger scale that it feels like i don't know i <laughs> i would like to think that it is not conniving but this is a supposition only. Okay. Supposition. They feel everybody's so distracted with everything else going on overseas that we're completely overlooking the drastic changes that are being done here, especially those that directly affect women. And again, I don't know who made the statement or the comment. I don't know it might have been on a joy and read post that's originally where i saw harrison booker's like a portion of his speech and someone said like no y'all need to understand the demographic he's also speaking to of wanting to make more babies he's speaking specifically to conservative white women and because like it, it goes in line with the whole, as a populace, white people are essentially in a declination in comparison to other races. So technically, they're the minorities now, right? And there's been this push, which is why they're saying that, like, the abortion ban is going full steam ahead. The uh, ban on contraceptives like the plan b pill and other variations uh the overturning of roe v wade things of that nature it's not just to like piss on women but it's it's essentially to like that's that's a horrible analogy i'm so sorry it's not just to like screw us over but also it's to it, it, it falls down under, allegedly, a population control tactic. Again, allegedly. All of this is supposition. Um, but, 
Ooh, ooh, ooh. Also, I saw this thing. I saw this thing of like, I went to a bookstore with one of my besties recently. And one of the signs on it said, yes, we even sell banned books. And I was like, like, a la Tom and Jerry freaking rubbing my eyes. Like, what? And she's like, what's up? And I'm like, does that say banned books? And she's like, yes. And I was like, why are, why are books being banned? Like, I like my brain was literally malfunctioning. <laughs> I was having such a freaking moment of like, no, 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 we're not doing that. And I think Biden did mention in his speech that, like, there should not be erasure because, like, that's part of history, too, which agreed. We should not erase things from history books. We should not erase history by removing content and literary works. And because, like, even if who said it? Ooh, Julia Quinn she said this incredible quote where it was like every book might not be for everyone but every book is for someone right so it's like we're gonna talk more on that on like the next episode where we're gonna cover more about like books and reading and knowledge and the power of staying informed and things of that nature but other things going on the tiktok ban the blockout the blockout is technically more on a larger scale so the blockout began during the met gala um against all attendees and they were like you know you want your easy list just look at everybody that attended the met gala that's the place where to start you block them completely on social media you block them completely on like even listening platforms if they're musicians because that affects their money and people like Lizzo, you know, responded and people were like, you know, why has it taken you this long to say something? I mentioned that a bit more in last week's episode, but when I went on a, on a little dig, right, to find a full list, there really isn't one. Like, it's not structured, and I feel like while yes it is for a beautiful cause and it is to keep the pressure on and to keep bringing the awareness and to keep motioning for the pause of like i don't know why i just put perfume on (laughs) that's so random what am i doing That was such a weird little, like, tangent on pop culture. I'm channeling, and we have not begun to record that yet. But anyway. I, you know, it saddens me a little bit. I feel like the reason the student protests are more organized in general is because it is a physical aspect to protesting. And there was a more concise list behind it. Um individuals can get more rallied together even the blocking of ban of um brands not bands the blocking of brands right like the protests on on brands also is very effective because i feel like it is also much more organized there is a more concise list like people know and you don't go to like mcdonald's to starbucks to freaking um like Moroccan hair oil products, uh, freaking can't remember the company, but they were like selling dates and people were like, don't buy those dates for Ramadan when it was happening. And even like Kellogg's or Nestle or like really big companies, Procter and Gamble, like very, very high up there. Right. I think this is just my perspective on it all. The reason why those were much more effective, as are the protests that are happening, is because there are alternatives. So, as far as, like, products go, you can find different cereals that have nothing to do with any of those companies. Breads, lotions, skincare, healthcare, makeup care, like, whatever it is, alternatives exist. 
which is why it was easier for people to make the move. But when it comes to artistry, celebrity, musicians, things of that nature, it's harder for people to immediately pull away because it's like, well, there's a lot of emotional factors and investment that also go into it. And I know that can sound like y'all can sit there and be like, I'm gonna that sounds like such cock and bull, but I like it really is a thing of such big fandoms have been built for so long and I feel like even within those fandoms there is so much division on like the artists that have or have not spoken up that it's like it's it's this push and pull which is making it so difficult for them to lose as much fo- as mu- like a higher volume of following as quickly although I will say the protest scene the um, blocking the boycotting boycott was the word I was thinking when it comes to brands and companies could not think of it it works <laughs> and it was something not haha funny but I was sitting on YouTube I was watching what the hell was I watching I was watching the stray kids music video <laughs> I was watching yes I am a stay anyway uh <laughs> watching Shrek Kids music video and it like it ended and an ad started playing and it was a Starbucks ad and I was like huh I don't think I have ever in my life seen a Starbucks ad before and yes in recent time there have been a plethora of ads that have come out and I just I kind of like giggled to myself because and I think I did mention this last episode where it was like they released their quarterly review or whatever and they were like yeah the reason why uh, we don't have as many sales as before and a drop in revenue is because we only get a rush in during the day and we don't have people that consume our products during the middle of the day right and I'm like y'all lying <laughs> Y'all know it's because of the fucking boycotts. Because prior to all of this occurring, prior to getting more educated on what was going on, you could walk to any Starbucks in the middle of the day while everyone is either at school or working, and it would still be stacked with people rushing in. And I was like, y'all lying. (laughs) Y'all lying like a motherfucker. And I don't know whose song they used on the ad, but it was, like, basically pushing for, like, the ice drinks because summer's coming and all that. And I was like, wow, y'all trying, trying, huh? (laughs) And I sat there and I was like, have I ever seen a Starbucks ad before, right? Like, when I was, like, in high school, like, fucking 10 years ago, even when I was in college. Like, damn, that was was 10 years ago. (laughs) Whatever. Point is, like, I'm like, I don't remember ever seen a Starbucks ad and I'm like very interesting how now there's like been such a big push for it Ben Affleck and JLo are supposedly divorcing was one of the headlines I saw I don't know how true it is I also saw this other thing that like they went outside and like showed off for the paps or whatever so it feels like a toss-up if it's true or not we shall see when i first saw it though i did send it to one of my friends and i was like i wonder if this is because of everything that's going on with diddy (laughs) but anywho going back to tiktok let's talk about the good old tiktok ban so the ban itself is in place since a couple months ago now and it was created under the 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 excuse <laughs> the reasoning behind it allegedly <laughs> was that it's for our safety and our protection against china the country and Xu, who is the president of tiktok or ceo he was like you know we're not going to give up the fight like we are going to do everything in our power but when I logged back in after having been absent when I was from TikTok, I got prompted to use my Facebook sign in and I was like, hmm, no, 
I don't want to do that. And then I was like, do you want to sync your IG contacts? And I was like, hmm, no, I don't want to do that either. And I was like, hmm, meta, are you launching a takeover of TikTok? Is that what this is? And then the other part of me was like, if y'all did buy out TikTok and y'all are just waiting to make the full announcement of this like amalgamation for when like the nine months are up of like when the company needs to be sold can y'all put all the music back from universal music group it's on meta <laughs> put it back on tiktok <laughs> i want to dance my face out to some carolita g um <laughs> but yeah i was just like interesting you couldn't do that before <laughs> like it was not a prompt an immediate prompt right and i was like Hmm. <laughs> my my little inspector gadget brain started turning like hmm. <laughs> mm. but one last thing I'm going to mention so Fearless Fund is a organization that was created by Arian Simone and Ayana Parsons in 2018 to grant opportunities for black women and providing them grants um as like for those that own businesses and they're currently being sued by edward bloom for going against the 1866 civil rights act for only providing grants to black women and i'm just like what in the like what the fuck (laughs) i literally i was i sat here and i was like and this is why dei is important This is why it matters because, (laughs) dude, what? Like, it, it was set up because clearly there is a need for that organization to exist because of the disparities that exist with providing black women and women of color but especially black women with opportunities when it comes to grants and loans and financing for their businesses. Like even in freaking in Captain America, Sam, like he goes to like, I think get a loan from the bank and they're like, no, thank you for what you did and everything as an Avenger, but mm, can't give it to you. Like, uh. <laughs> Like, what? I just, I was reading it, and I was like, like, God, (laughs) I'm not trying to be funny, but, like, are you sending your son back to the earth? Because, like, what is all of this insanity that is going on right now? (sighs) And I just feel like that is a further attack on women (laughs) as a whole. Um, I am going to get more into, in a later episode just the state of the world when it comes to women and women's safety not only because of the video that was released by cnn of the attack on cassie but also a lot of the discourse that i've seen online since of like other women speaking up on that episode we are also going to (laughs) cover a man or a bear (laughs) And the trend that has taken the internet by storm because everyone had the same fucking answer. The bear. (laughs) But. Oh, and we're also on that one. We're also going to cover what's her face. Have y'all have y'all seen the TikTok? Where she was like, I'm not a feminist. I can actually cook. And she was that ass. She was so serious, y'all. Like she was not. It was not satire and every badass woman has since like responded and like you've shown like the dope ass shit that they do for a living they're like i'm a feminist now watch me cook (laughs) women i love them (laughs) amazing stellar 10 out of 10 um (laughs) i was just like i could do one for like all my cosplays but i'm just tired (laughs) I'll probably do it later. Who knows? We'll see. Now to get into today's topic of conversation. 
which is AI, the way of the future. So <laughs> what is AI? AI is artificial intelligence. It essentially is not just like Sunny, the robot from iRobot. It is not just you know, R2-D2 and C-3PO. It is not just freaking Ex Machina. <laughs> it is everything from my girl Siri here on our iPhones, our girl Alexa, chat GBT, even Google Maps, even um, GPS systems, like, even though it is input, you know, you have the programming of, like, the voice, and it's telling you what to turn, and you have, um, like, I mentioned ChatGPT, uh, other things, like, have you guys seen the AI videos? Those kind of freak me out, though. It gives very uncanny valley of where it does, like, the shape-shifting, and granted, I get, like, it's an, there's an art form to it, absolutely, but I've seen the ones of where there's like dupe ads for other creators' works, clothing. I mean, the promotion of like pots and pans by celebs that you know they're not promoting those freaking pots and pans, things like that. Even videos that get uploaded to TikTok or YouTube. Like, if you listen to this sound and save and send to three people. You will get this blessing, if not prepare for the worst week of your life. Like, type shit. Like, claim without sound shit. <laughs> yeah, that. I'm just like, bruh, what is going on? <sighs> of course, like I said, AI is not new. However, it is much more in our faces now than it was ever before. I mean, even now when you go on Google, you do get like AI results and it's, it's interesting to me for various reasons. While it is very helpful and at times somewhat comical, like the Met Gala when everyone thought Katy Perry was there or showing looks for like, um, Selena Gomez who wasn't there either or things like that. Uh, it or Rihanna. Rihanna wasn't there either. You know, it's it's things of that nature that is also slightly creepy. <laughs> Just how real it looked. Um, I can't remember where I saw there was an incident of like a teacher that got accused of saying shit that he did not say, and thankfully he had receipts. Otherwise, he would have like lost his livelihood. Like, while it is. It has its moments of being very fun, like as shown by the boys on this channel on YouTube. Their creator is real funny. They made like songs off of it and they did a, it was a chat GBT prompt, chat, G, the, 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 <laughs> chat GPT prompt. Jeez, try saying that five times fast, fuck. <laughs> and real funny, right? Like the, it has its, its ways to be used. It also has its very business savvy forward ways as well however there are a lot of fears around it because just overall fears when it comes to new technology and advances moving a lot faster than a pace that like we as humans can keep up with uh other forms of artificial intelligence that are taking over is like self-driving cars uh i saw this snippet for the show was it robbie amell I think so. <laughs> if not him, it was his brother. One of the two. No, I, mean, I think it was Robbie. But he's in a show and it's like he ends up dying in a self-driving car because the car does not like it overrides its orders. And then he ends up as a voice in one of the cars later on. Like it's a real, real meta, <laughs> real weird. Um, I just saw like a snippet of it on TikTok, but y'all, I have been perpetually online lately. I got to go outside. <laughs> I have been in overdrive right now with like creating and just trying to keep up with everything that's been going on. But even, oh, like the algorithm, <laughs> good old algorithm. 
that is here on YouTube, the algorithm on Instagram, on Facebook, on TikTok, the things that basically manage the FYP going and even like the tracking across apps. Like there are, we experience artificial intelligence every single day to some capacity. And even in editing apps, like I have CapCut, for example, is an app that I use to edit some of my content. And on there, you can modify it so AI does essentially the work for you. <laughs> and like to, to a fault, right? To some degree. What is it though? So as I mentioned, it is artificial intelligence. It is ever-changing to in today's day and age we are in a constantly changing society we are moving forward quite quickly with a lot of things while there are a lot of technological advances that have a lot of benefit as quickly as they have a benefit they can also be corrupted by the examples that i mentioned where it's like they can be used for artistry they can be used for fun but they can also be used to create some pretty fucked up shit i love doing this thing at the end of makeup and motivation where it gives you a little bit of hope right because <laughs> like that's the point doing some cute little makeup doing some fun little motivation and when i was looking up for like a nice little tech quote none of them were nice <laughs> none of them were friendly i was like damn we all have this very uh, damper idea around technology don't we <laughs> one day the robots are going to take over the world and we will be at their motherfucking mercy um but one of the fears that is currently based is that technology is advancing at such a faster pace and we know what to do with it that it is moving forward so quickly that we as humans are displacing ourselves from jobs, from opportunities, from being able to do things while on a business aspect, it might be beneficial. It also causes a lot of issues. I mean, if you've ever had to freaking dispute a package on Amazon, for example, you're not immediately talking to a representative, you're talking to an AI bot. If you've ever gotten spam comments on any content that you've seen or made, you know, that's artificial intelligence as well. The um, bot profiles, things of that nature, like it is constantly surrounding us and around us. Why does this matter for the journey of life, love and self healing? Well, there are very beneficial aspects to it as well, like apps that help you meditate and help you sleep uh sounds that are on interfaces like youtube things that are on applications like what is that one application i don't know where tom hiddleston's voice is on it <laughs> that it helps you sleep things like that i mean you know we have things that monitor our health and heart rate our biometrics like with our apple watches there are things that are very beneficial as well, like journaling applications that have, you know, preset prompts that can help you dive deeper into life and love and self-healing and all that gorgeous, gorgeous shit that we focus on here on Makeup and Motivation. The reason that it matters is because we are in an ever-changing world. Things are advancing at quite a fast-paced rate. I mean, if you are in the job market right now and hunting for a job i don't know if you guys have seen like all the hacks that are on tiktok of like how to get your application past the bots on chat like past the bots when you initially um submit your applications because they use ai to basically vet candidates that don't have the requirements listed as like part of the requirements for the position itself even you could be the most qualified candidate and not have the right words and it doesn't get past ai so it's like the reason why it matters is because as more that we continue to progress right because every major corporation right now is all about innovation and moving forward and getting things done and <laughs> revenue 
it is important not to lose sight of not just yourself in the process okay like taking a breather like i mentioned like i'm going outside tomorrow i gotta go touch some grass i've been around tech entirely too much right but also not forgetting to like really take a pause and when you get back in it catching up and learning like we really are in a point in time where it's like if you do not learn it it's becoming a very sink or swim situation revolving around technology there are free courses on sites such as linkedin i think google has some free courses as well harvard x has some courses like there's there's other sites that have things to kind of get you a little bit on grasping especially technology and everything that's going on because as the landscape of society is moving to be more ai savvy more technology savvy so are the requirements for higher levels of employment and for even entry levels of employment honestly All I can tell you, my lovely hummingbirds, of when it comes to artificial intelligence in your daily life is use it where it is beneficial. Do your very best not to be malicious with it. (laughs) And definitely allow yourself to take some breaks, to peel away from the screens, to go touch some grass, to have fun. And remember that like... You know, as much as technology and learning matters, don't forget yourself and your immediate environment in the process either. I know it can be difficult for all my job seekers out there that are looking for places. Definitely, like, definitely go look at those TikTok hacks. (laughs) Please, please do. Use your resources. Get ahead of the curve. And do as much as you possibly can. Because, well, we might be reverting (laughs) when it comes to liberties of life and a lot of the policies that go around diversity and equity and inclusion and womanhood. We are still moving very, very quickly when it comes to technology and you know, I, I don't want y'all to be left in the dust, my lovely lovely birds. Um, but yeah, the cute little quote that I had <laughs> was, technology is anything that wasn't around when you were born. And it was said by Alan Kay. And tech is very synonymous with innovation. If you work at, like, a big corporation and you're like, we are rolling in some new innovations, my lovely hummingbirds, take those trainings. (laughs) Take those trainings and learn. (laughs) That is the best advice that I can give you. Uh, Did y'all hear this in the beginning when I was like, this is not the world that Xenon had planned for us? Yeah, I was, like, watching it, and I don't know what else I saw. I don't know, I was watching some, like, movie. It was an older movie of the advancements that they thought we would have in t- for technology and I was just cackling because I had just watched the boys video and I was like if only they knew that that is not <laughs> where we're at not currently at least not facing to the public right but that's it for me for you for today I hope you enjoyed today's episode I know it was a little all over the place hope you love the makeup look um But yeah, I love y'all so much. I will catch y'all tomorrow, finally, for (laughs) the episode of Rate It, where Nikki and I review Don't Worry Darling, which, like, perfect, because we talked about tech today, and that's a very techie film as well. So, (laughs) as always, les mando mucha paz, muchos besos y les recuerdo que miren hacia la luna sending you much peace many kisses and rainy to always look up the moon i love you all so much do not fear what you do not know my lovely hummingbirds because you always have the potential to learn it anyway 
All right, that's it. That's all I got. I'll <laughs> catch y'all in the next one. Bye.